Would you please speak a little towards why you think universalism is untenable, perhaps in relation to David Bentley Hart's new book, and all shall be saved. I don't know whether you've come across Hart's new book. Uh, I haven't read the book, but my arguments would be simply biblical arguments. It seems to me that both Jesus and the other authors of the New Testament clearly taught that not everyone would be saved, um, but that those, as, as Paul says, those who receive the free gift of righteousness will um come to justification and glorification and so forth. So um, I'm told that Jesus warned more of the dangers of hell than he spoke of the promise of heaven. I think the historical Jesus believed that not everyone would be saved. Um, you remember his saying about the broad gate and the wide path that leads to destruction and the many that go in there compared to the narrow gate and the uh, hard path that leads to life. So just honestly, it would be nice to believe in universalism, but I, I don't think that's what the New Testament authors believed in. This is obviously one that, that has a few people interested, though. Another one here asks on the same subject, how do you square God being all loving with exclusivism? And they say, surely if God oh, is all loving... Yeah. He sent prophets to all parts of the world, all through history, yeah. and is more interested in love than doctrinal details, i.e. specifically what you believe. Oh, well, I would certainly agree with that. Uh, I used to speak of Christian exclusivism, but then I changed my terminology because I think that that is a prejudicial word. It gives the impression that God is trying to exclude people from salvation, when in fact, I think he's trying to include as many as he can. So if you think about it, the opposite of universalism ought to be called particularism, Christian particularism. And so that's the terminology that I now adopt, is that not everyone will be saved, but some will be saved and some will be lost. And if you ask uh, for a defense of Christian particularism, it would be based upon human freedom. I, I think that God's will as it says in 1 Timothy 2.14, is that every person be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth, but people have freedom of the will to reject God's love and forgiveness, and so to separate themselves from God irrevocably. And God respects that freedom of choice.